Hi guys, my name is KP Bala. As some of you guys know me as a clinical tutor, I'm also a resident medical officer here in Perth. So today we're going to talk about interviews and how they're conducted, how you should present yourself for the interviews and what happens during an interview. Now for those of you out there who have been following my videos, thank you so much for leaving those comments down below. Please keep on doing them. Please keep on asking questions. I would absolutely love to answer all your questions, all right? Now I did see the question about the observership. Please stay tuned for that. I am making another video next week. It'll be out, all right? So everyone, thank you for all, all your support and please leave the comments down below. Now, today we're gonna talk about interviews. So interviews, some hospitals don't conduct interviews. They use the selection criteria as the interview. Now the hospitals that do conduct the interview, there are two ways they can approach it, either online or face-to-face. Now, online is a bit more nerve-wracking because you can't really reciprocate their um, emotions and how they present themselves either, but it, that's all right. It is pretty much the same principle, okay? Now, for interviews, let's talk about how we should present ourselves. First and foremost, we should look very presentable. We should wear professional, we should be dressed very professionally, clean, and also we should look presentable as well. And that is how they expect you to be in the hospital as well. Um, and then apart from that, when you go for an interview, be very well versed with your selection criteria questions and how, what examples you've used. Be very well versed with the interview questions, which we're gonna talk about in a while. The other thing about the interviews are, who's gonna be in the interview room? Now, the people that are gonna be in the interview room are either, one is gonna be HR, which who's gonna be dealing with your legal formalities and things like that, and then the other one's gonna be a doctor who's your principal clinical supervisor. Those of you who are having a provisional registration, they will be the ones that will be signing your opera forms in the midterm and the end of term. Now, when you do go for the interviews, there might be additional one person, but that'll be the HR person. After you enter the interview room or uh, in a you know, face to face, they usually ask you a couple of questions such as your driver's license status, your visa status, and your just a little bit about yourself, about your current background, how many how much of clinical experience you've had. If it's an online interview, you can they would skip all that. That's not even part of the online interview. All right. Now, once you start the interview, there are two types of questions you can get. One is the clinical questions, and one is ethical questions. Clinical questions are usually about two questions, and they usually involve cases such as sudden collapse, chest pain, post-operative management such as needing fluid resuscitation or internal bleeding, um, then managing hyperkalemia, that is one of their favorite questions, and hypoglycemia as well. And apart from the unwitnessed fall, when you get called in for an unwitnessed fall, and anaphylaxis. So as you can see, these are all some sort of like an emergency case settings. And this is because you will be expected to work as a night RMO or an after hours RMO and they wanna know that you are becoming a safe doctor. And that is, you know the management and when you get stuck, when do you call for help? That is the idea behind it. Are you gonna be a safe doctor? Is it okay for them to hire you and leave you in the ward there, all right? So please be careful when you answer. If you don't know an answer, if you're unsure of an answer, please say, I'm gonna review with my senior consultant or my senior doctor and get it sorted, all right? Now, you have, the other part of the interview is your ethical questions. You have a three to five, it can even go up to seven questions. Usually online videos, online interviews are about 10 question interviews. The other, the face-to-face -face can vary um, from three to five to six, it depends. Okay, so what are these ethical questions? So they're basically cover a very broad range. And some of these topics that they like to cover is safety. So when you see like, you know, if, 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 there, was a, if there was a mishap in the ward where a wrong medication was given to the patient and how would you report this incident? Or if a wrong prescri prescription was seen, how would you report this incident? How would you manage this incident? The other thing would be your time management. When you come as an RMO, how would you prioritize your tasks in the ward? So time management is a very important thing that they like to go over. Then the next one is they ask you about what your career goals are. What, what are you planning to be? What are you planning, where is your path? Because sometimes they do help you a lot with it. So if you're gonna be a GP, they 
there is a program where they put you in the GP program where it satisfies all the criteria of obstetrics, pediatrics, ED, and general medicine or surgery, okay? So be honest with them, see what you're trying to go because BPD training, they might help you with that as well. So they'll try putting you in rotations that benefit you as well, okay? Apart from that, they do like to ask a bit of subjective questions such as what are your strengths or what are your weaknesses that you would like to, that you, uh, that you know about. Strengths, yes, we like to make sure that you don't boast too much about yourself. But, and weaknesses, make sure you're very truthful about your weaknesses. And when you mention your weaknesses, make sure that you have uh, a way of compensating for your weakness. So if you're poor with uh, drug dosages, then you're going to be like, I will check the AMH or the uh, Medscape, uh, Medscape or NPS or anything online and check the dosages before prescription or check it with your senior doctor before prescribing the medications. So things like that. Even PPS is another uh, online source that you could use. So make sure when you mention your weaknesses, you have a way to compensate for it. And when you mention strengths, make sure that you're very um, uh, you know, down to earth about it and that you, you're aware of your strengths and how you can use it in the ward or in the hospital setting to benefit others, okay? Then apart from that, the other favorite question they like to ask is a leadership role that you were in. So such as, um, tell us a leadership uh, where you have a, a, a scenario where you were able to display your leadership skills and be sure that you get, get, get a good one. It doesn't have to be the one in Australia. It can be back home as well, but don't take it like five, 10 years behind. Something some recent as well. Um, and make sure that you explain it well and what the outcome was, which is like the star format, which I had gone over in my last video. So do check it out if you have a question about what the star format is, okay? And last but not least, uh, they do ask you a bit about what happens with conflicts in the ward? This is also one of their favorite questions. So there are two types of conflicts. One is conflicts with your nurses, and one is conflict with your colleagues. So this is something that you need to think about how you would um, manage conflicts on the ward, and it does happen a lot on the ward and in the hospitals, and it is a very important thing because that's how you maintain a good relationship with your colleagues. So think about all these questions. These are the main ones that do come. So in a brief summarization, you have Couple, two to three clinical scenarios, and the rest are in ethical questions. You have conflict resolution, safety management, prioritization um, of your work tasks, strengths and weaknesses of your own skill set, leader, displaying leadership skills, and last but not least, what might your career goals be? So, in a summary, in a nutshell, that is kind of what an interview contains. I hope this video has helped, and if you have any further questions about any of the ones I've gone over today, please do drop in a comment down below in my video, and I'm more than happy to answer them. And if you have any other questions about any other tasks or pathways in AMCs or interviews, anything like that, do drop it in, all right? We'll see you next time. Bye.